Hello Retro Fans! Welcome to another episode of C64 Customs and um, surprisingly this episode is not going to be about the C64 but another 8-bit system and uh, you may guess it already because the title was uh, kind of revealing the truth, secret, whatever you want to call this. It's going to be about the NES and especially it's going to be about two things and uh, you may remember that um, around Christmas time I have received a uh, NES Advantage arcade stick, joystick, whatever, yeah. And um, it was in a not so good condition, let's put it like this. And um, some buttons weren't really working and um, it was a bit dirty and a couple of things. And I decided um, it's about time to spend some time with this um, NES Advantage because I really like this. And the purpose was um, that I want to combine this with a special game. I was uh, looking forward to and I have ordered the game back in December. And it was shipped on the 20th, 28th of December. And uh, without joking, it took more than four weeks to get this to Germany. And um, the issue was, or basically not to Germany, to let's say to me. And um, the thing is that uh, it made it quite quickly over the ocean. And um, I, I fully understand that this takes a couple of days. It's not an issue, and uh, if I order something um, on the other side of the ocean or in other parts of this of this world, then uh, I do not expect to have this stuff on my desk the next day. But um, it has arrived in Germany at the 10th of January, January, and then it got stuck. So I was checking the tracking, and uh, I really thought what's going on with this one and uh, I saw that this uh, got stuck at the uh, Frankfurt airport where they uh, do all this um, tax and customs handling and all that things and um, well nothing happened so after a week I was just uh, sending out an email and asking what what's going to happen with my package what's the issue and um, the customs told me, well, this is uh, something in belongs of uh, DHL, that's the postal service, and you have to ask your question to this place. So, so I could. I thought, okay, let's see whether I can contact those people. And uh, they told me, well, it is. Um, we, we are working on this, and uh, well, it will take some time, and... Uh, Thank you very much for your understanding and um, well no there was no understanding on my side i was slowly getting kind of um, angry about this whole thing and guess what a week later nothing happened at all so i was writing a second email and asking what's going to be the topic or what's going to be your plan uh, with delivering of my package and uh, they were kind of um, refusing to answer and uh, the interesting thing is it was a Friday and I wrote the email at 5 p.m. in the afternoon and 20 minutes later my tracking status has changed so it uh, changed to kind of shipped or something like this and uh, well I was uh, going to make a screenshot of this uh, tracking list because it is amazingly long but anyway and um, so I thought okay great that I have remind you that you may do your job and ship that stuff to me and uh, basically it has an, uh, it has arrived at I think on Wednesday here in my hometown and uh, I was at home surprisingly well I have a day job so basically and uh, I couldn't pick it from the uh, post service because it's one day delayed something like this and but finally, I was able to get this and uh, we will have a look at this package because I'm really excited. I'm really looking forward to this one. And um, as I said, as a preparation for this project, I took some um, care. 
of this um, NES Advantage and we're going to have a look what I have done to it in a few seconds. And yeah, I'm back and uh, one thing I really want to shout out loud is a big thank you to all of my supporters on Patreon and as well to my new channel members here on YouTube. I highly appreciate your help, your, your support and uh, this is going to help this channel a lot and uh, I'm really looking forward to get in contact with these uh, channel members during my next live streams. I can't promise a um, a date so far because I really have to balance this with real life stuff, work and all that things. But uh, I'm really trying to get uh, online as uh, soon as possible and then we can have some nice live chat and I'm really looking forward how those um, new YouTube channel membership only features may work. Anyway, big thanks. I really, really, really appreciate your help and your support and this is really something that makes me very happy and uh, this is, as I said, a big support for this channel. But we were going to talk about something else and uh, I'm going to show you this video here and here you can see the NES Advantage and I started with getting rid of this adhesive that has been wrapped around those cables and I see that they split it. I think that's an issue that just came over the time and just to keep them together the guy who were who was using this um, took some adhesive tape and tried to wrap this together and uh, for now I just removed it and tried to clean the cable as best as possible and as usual with all those NES stuff the cable is really so long it's it's amazing how long those cables are and i really understand if you just sit on your um on your couch and you want to play games and uh, the nes is somewhere uh, in, in close to your tv then you may need a longer cable but uh for me it's in front of me and therefore i'm a little bit uh well struggling with this amount of cable here i'm doing some cleaning and trying trying to get rid of the remains of those rubber feet uh, you may have seen that one was missing and so I decided I get rid of all of them because if I'm going to add one then it will have a different height and this is not going to work. And here I was just using some uh, uh, WD-40 uh, which, which contains some kind of um, something that uh, solves things, um, adhesives and stuff like this to uh, clean the base plate and uh, the next step was to get this internals out of the box and I was really struggling with this uh, potentiometer it was very very tight and I it took, it took a couple of attempts until I was able to get it off and um, now we can see the stick is uh, a two piece thingy and uh, the next thing was obviously to clean all the parts so I just did, did this in my, uh, I think a sink, is it called a sink? With some uh, soup and uh, yeah, I think, yeah. And a very soft brush and I was uh, able to get rid of most of the stuff. So it's not very bright. So I may consider to do some retro brighting on this uh, case, but, but actually it looks quite fine. And after the cleaning, it was really, a, ma a major difference so and it was a bit smelly too so I think someone who smoked has used this because there was some kind of uh, well cold smoke uh, a flavor in the air or something like this fragrance anyway and um, yeah I did some cleaning button by button because uh, they had collected uh, a lot of uh, sticky dust and uh, they were a bit let's say hard to move inside the the case also and uh, I was checking whether I found every 
piece of dirt and uh, if I have found all the buttons uh, I missed two on my desk and then I went back and here I'm trying to get rid of the, the water inside uh, usually I let this uh, dry for a few days but uh, I haven't seen any progress so far and I tried to apply some uh, hot air as well I think this part is coming quite soon yeah I did some cleaning first with isopropanol just to get rid of the of the, the sticky dust and all that things inside you may have seen that the q-tip became uh, very very darkish and here i tried to open the the micro switches just to have a look inside but i wasn't able to do so and i decided to leave them as they are and uh, we will see whether they are working and if not i may have to desolder them and maybe i have to replace them yeah i was uh, cleaning the the rubber buttons and uh, that that's a part where you really have to pay some attention that you do not uh, remove this kind of uh, carbon oxide material that's on those buttons and uh, i did some additional cleaning with contact spray that's um, a vd40 contact uh, spray which contains some cleaning potion as well and uh, this uh, usually works very fine. I use this for uh, restoring C64 keyboards. And here I'm trying to blow out the water out of those buttons, but uh, even this wasn't working. There was still some uh, water inside. So after a couple of attempts and uh, I, I nearly melted one of the buttons, I decided to take a very small uh, piece of this uh, kind of towel or whatever and uh, tissue and trying to get rid of the water inside the buttons because this part is going to be covered by the rubber buttons and it will probably never go away and may cause some corrosion inside or something like this so i was indeed a bit carefully about the same for the red buttons just trying to remove the water inside the buttons and then uh, i just did some reassembling which is not not too difficult i just had to check whether the buttons are in the right position whether they work and uh, to realign this kind of metal piece which is some kind of ground connection and uh, rechecking whether the alignment is correct and putting back the potentiometers they they are closed so i couldn't clean them so there's no access from from the outside checking the button alignment and then bringing back the, the joystick I did some kind of re-greasing with some uh, silicone grease just a very very small amount because if you put too much inside and it collects dust and it's getting worse so it's really just a very very thin layer uh, of this and you may have recognized that I just forgot to insert the joystick so I had to reassemble this whole thing and now I'm just uh, putting back all the screws and as a very last step I have to put on the new rubber feet and I place them uh, in the very out corners just in case I have to get to the inside as well so that I just have to lift the feet a bit and then uh, I'm able to get to the inside. So and uh, well here it is I mean you have seen it already and uh, it looks quite okay it has some damage from a cable that was probably uh, placed on on this top part interestingly the buttons are fine but they are some kind of a kind of melt scratch or something like this and there are some uh, tiny amount of a kind of a whatever resistant pen which I couldn't get off but overall it looks quite fine and the button looks good as well got some nice stand now and the case has very slight damage here on on the corner but i decided to leave it for now i may have to put some uh, kind of adhesive or something like this to to this corner if it's going to make some some noise or something like this but well yeah let's have a look whether this is going to work i'm really looking forward to this and i just did some quick uh, cable wrapping i may put some uh, heat shrinking shrinking material or insulation material on this but i really have to find some black one i just have it in green in this size and uh, it looks a bit 
not so good, let's say it like this. And uh, I leave the contact as they are. I just did some uh, cleaning and some uh, cleaning and some uh, contact spray, but I may have to open them and readjust the pins. So that's probably something I will do later if we have if we are going to encounter some issues. But for now, let's move on to the package. And as you can see, there has been a lot of kind of communication here on this package. And uh, you may see it is coming from Castlemania Games from uh, Monroe, Washington, I think. And um, let's see if we can get to the inside. There is a lot of uh, stuff around. I have no idea where have to go in whether this is on the top or if it's the button but let's see so perhaps some some background story story uh, I mean we see a lot of new releases for the c64 for example. Um, and we see some re-releases of some games for the C64 and I was really excited to see something new for the NES but the game itself is not new it is uh, from the 80s and the interesting thing is that this is a special edition or collector's edition well it's a special edition, edition of Metal Storm and well it's a very nice box and it's sealed all around and we can't see inside so we may have to open it very carefully to check what's going to be the content. The funny thing or strange thing whatever we want to put is uh, I stopped buying collector's edition for the C64 because I did this for quite a while, quite extensively, so to say, and um, I was uh, very keen on getting cartridge releases and uh, deluxe and whatever special something releases, but I recognize that most of the time I'm just ripping the cartridge out of the package, having a short glance at it, put a package on my shelf and just using the cartridge. And um, this is maybe not the appreci appreciation we want to put towards the people who are working on the stuff. And uh, it's a bit pity that this stuff just collects dust on my shelf. So I decided, well, um, I will go for, let's say, um, digital versions or standard cartridge versions for games for, well, for now, basically. Since um, I do not have that much time playing games at all and it makes probably not that much sense to put all that stuff in my shelf and um, let it there kind of ignored. Since I'm more focused on hardware, it is probably a better plan to spend the money on hardware instead of games I'm not going to play anyway. But this is an exception because this is for the NES and I was really, really excited to see that there is something new for the NES and uh, have a look at this box it looks really fantastic it has a lot of uh, kind of uh, applications so to say we have some very shiny um, metal like parts on it and we have a very nice drawing of this robot and now let's open it quite slowly And here we can see what's so special about this because it contains a little box with an action figure. And this is really something I, I'm so excited to see that uh, somebody really takes time to produce an action figure for a game that's about more than 30 years old. and. We were going to have a look inside this box indeed, but for now let's check what's the other content. And here we have 
kind of a badge, kind of a huge badge, a very heavy and huge badge. This looks very amazing. I'm not sure whether I'm going to put this on my shirt. It's probably going to create some issues with my backbone or something like this, but the quality, it looks so amazing. It's fantastic. So let's move on. Basically, what I expect that there's perhaps some kind of a game inside. But here we have an envelope and this contains some cards. Certificate of Authenticity, Authenticity Collector's Edition number 1277 of 3000. So there are not that much of it, but uh, I think this is indeed a very huge number for a very old game. And here we have some kind of uh, postcards. I'm probably not going to send them, but uh, these are very nice collector cards. And you can see that this is some shiny imprint. So it's not just a color print. There is some additional color. And here we have even some kind of model imprint on this card. Very, very nice. So this is indeed a very cool stuff they have put together. And now we are coming to the bottom of the box and this is going to contain the game itself, Metal Storm. I have no idea how to place this, but uh, it's shiny all over, but we have to get to the inside of this box because I want to play the game. So, then let's do some quick getting rid of things on my desk so that we can have that we have some space to operate. So, it is really a very nice collector's edition. Put this somewhere else so that we do not have any conflict with this one. So let's have a look at the action figure because this is really something I'm looking forward to. I know probably I should keep this as it is sealed somewhere stored in my ethic attic for the next 20 years and then uh, maybe 2030 or so I can sell this for an incredible amount of money, but um, no, I'm going to open it and I want to have a look at it and I want to play the game. I just have to get rid of this adhesive here. It is very sticky. I don't want to cut this, but at the end it's probably going to end up like this anyway. So. Now it became a challenge. <laughs> Can't step back from it. But I'm making progress. And if it's just a millimeter. And here we go. Who? This was tough. Let's see if we can get this open without damaging. Oh, one part is already. Okay, here we go. And here we have the M. 308 or 308 and uh, as you can see that's nothing to play with this is really something that just kind of stands on your desk or sits on your desk whatever you want to call this and you can just enjoy this very nice build and um, very nice painted action figure so it is it has some slight movement but uh, Probably not going to throw this into a battle with other battle robots, androids, whatever. 
So this is really just something you have on your desk and you enjoy it as it is. So let's put it back for now. And I think I'm going to store this back in this box just for now, so that's not going to get damaged. Oops. Oh. Oh. And let's move on to the game. So this is some kind of classic ceiling, so we just have to cut this open. Unwrapping. And as you can see, it's a very nice and shiny box. And it feels pretty solid. And surprise, surprise, it contains a NES cartridge and some sort of manual and I assume this is going to be a poster which is a bit pity that they folded it a hundred times so that's going to be kind of a riddle to unfold it and bring it back into shape Looks like I'm going to need a lot of space to get this somehow in a flat position or shape. And it's a two-sided poster. Metal Storm. And let's have a look at the other side. And once again, Metal Storm. So we got some kind of bluish, lilac, dark green theme on this side. And we got a more greenish theme on the other side. So it's really up to you and maybe you can um, kind of color fit this to your collection. Whatever fits well. <laughs> but um, I really have to find a way to get rid of this uh, Holding marks. This is really a bit sad that they haven't rolled it like most of the stuff I have received in the past for let's say newer C64 releases. I understand that this kind of blows up the package size a bit but uh, especially for posters it makes sense that it is rolled. So Story controls, gameplay, continue, password, items, ledges and barriers, special techniques, stages. And then the whole stuff I assume in uh, Japanese, probably. Since I can't read it, I can't even say what it is at all. But um, yeah, it's a very nice printed manual and uh, I assume it's going to be in two languages and here I think this is going to be Japanese and uh, maybe I can learn now Japanese word by word, something like this. Would be funny, probably the first person on earth that learned Japanese with model store manuals, but perhaps it's not going to be so easy. Anyway, I will have a look at this later. I think the game is kind of playable without reading the whole manual. And let's have a look at this game cartridge. So, as you can see, it has not this typical NES color. It has some blue cartridge. It is a, a thick version. It's uh, not this very thin cartridge. It's really something that's very thick. It has a very nice sticker. 
and uh, as, as usual it starts to peel off here on the edge <laughs> because this is some kind of temperature problem so if this stuff changes temperature then uh, it has different behavior and uh, this keeps peeling the sticks off after a while but uh, so far the cartridge feels very very solid very very nice so this is a very rigid build and uh, this kind of sleeve, uh, well, mm, it is not so nice. I mean, it bends out here at the bottom. And uh, if you just want to put this in your shelf, it's going to have kind of an awkward position. So I think I like this paper-like uh, sleeves a bit more. But uh, maybe this may change over the time. We may apply some bending here to the bottom then uh, may get back into shape but overall it isn't feeling as good as the cartridge itself but well you can't have everything probably but for now let's check the game and I'm going to use my reworked NES um, you may say it looks like whatever it I haven't reworked the outside of the NES I just did this uh, RGB mod on the inside and even this isn't finished yet because I haven't soldered the YC slash S video connection because basically I'm just using the RGB connection and I haven't done the uh, recapping so far that's on my list and if I'm working on these topics, I'm going to rework the case as well because this looks really beaten up and it definitely needs some cleaning and I may have to replace the certain parts. It has some, some damage here on, on the edge. And, but for now, it is going to do the trick, I think. And we're going to combine this with my refreshed Advantage NES stick. So I just have to find some placement that we can have a view on all these things. And let's start with connecting this to the NES. I just assume that the white cable is going to be player one. Uh, to use the right orientation, basically. I'm going to need some power for the NES. And indeed we have to connect this to the OSSC because that's actually my preferred device for RGB video signals. Um, it is working with the FrameMaster as well. I have tested this and uh, it's creating a fantastic picture. That's really not something we have to debate, I think. But in terms of input lag, I think the OSSC is unbeatable. So, connection is there. And now we have to insert the game. All the way around. I may have to focus myself a little bit more. And now let's have a look if we can see something. And uh, I think the main thing we want to see right now is basically the input coming from the NES. And it is starting. I was a little bit afraid whether the game is going to run on this uh, PAL console. Uh, but uh, just to be prepared, I have a NTSC Famicom. And uh, in order to run NES games on the Famicom, we need 
an adapter. And this basically looks like this. So just in case the game wouldn't start on this PL console, we may have switched over to the Famicom. But obviously it is running. It is probably running a bit too slow because PL is just 50 Hz and NTSC is uh, 60 Hz. But I think especially for this game, this is not going to be too critical uh, because this is just maybe recognizable by music and the gameplay is probably not affected that much. And here we see some very nice intro and uh, I have to say I played Metal Storm on my Ever Drive already, but uh, there I never be. I'm, I'm never sure what kind of version it is uh, because it is coming from some kind of a ROM collection or something, and um, there was no intro. So it is very interesting to see an intro, and it looks a bit different. I think the title screen, and uh, let's see whether the stick is working. So this looks fine so far, and then uh, you may have to press start. Yes. Ready. Player left two. Oh, okay, that's the amount of players. So we can move. So the stick is working, and uh, we can jump, and we can fire, and we are supposed to have some turbo fire as well, which we can adjust that we have some kind of nice and even fire rate. And I'm going to use this just to prevent this rattling noise, which is kind of disturbing over the microphone over a while. And uh, you may are familiar with the game itself, but if not, I'm just going to tell you that you have some special features because this robot is able to walk on the ceiling by pressing the stick up and uh, pressing another button. So, just have to remember which one it was. Ah, we have to press down, not up, okay. And then we can walk on the ceiling. And the interesting thing is that uh, our enemies are going to do the very same. So, it's nothing we can hide and prevent. And now it looks like the game got stuck. Music is there. Uh, music is over. Music is gone as well. So interestingly, <laughs> now it's not completely stuck. It is just doing something strange. Ah, it went into pause mode. I have no idea why it. Why it has done this. Well, and then it just turns into a kind of action game, and that's something we really have to prevent not getting in contact with enemies. Well, which is kind of classical part of those games, and then you really have to move through, through these levels and trying to make as much progress as possible. And you may ask the question, what what's going to be about this feature of changing uh, the way we move in or during the gameplay? And uh, this game contains some kind of um, puzzles, let's call it like this, where you really have to switch position in order to make progress oops sorry because there are parts where you kind of get stuck if you're not going to do so and what i really like about this game is that there's a kind of broad variety of uh, opponents and this makes gameplay quite well let's say entertaining and uh, here we have one part. We can't jump over this because we can, or maybe we can jump over it. Or we simply switch to the ceiling and make some progress on here. 
And I went too far and he touched me and I couldn't kill him. So it plays a bit odd while <laughs> talking about and uh, not really staying focused on what's going on on the screen. But um, I will go and have probably some progress while uh, doing this for well, my own pleasure, so to say. And uh, as, as usual, you may have to remember a lot of things, so kind of uh, enemy patterns and where you have to switch positions and you really have to get used to the game mechanics like this jumping and all those things. And this will probably take a while to really get into this and then, uh, oh, not doing the same mistake again. Let's see whether this is going to happen now. We just collected some power-ups and now we got a problem that we can't get out of this room and uh, that's one place where we have to switch to the ceiling and then we can jump to the bottom basically. And you may have recognized that as I did this we are now turned into some kind of flame shape and this we can use to destroy enemies as well. Uh, because we are kind of uh, immortal in this mode. But not if we are not in this mode. And this is something I really have to pay attention to. But we had some kind of one-shot shield option that prevented that we are going to die right now. So, oh, this was close. So one thing I have to mention as well is that the stick is working very very good now. So this cleaning was indeed worth all the hassle and uh, I mean it wasn't too difficult and uh, therefore something that everybody can do to this kind of stick. and. Uh, Playing with it feels very good. I mean, especially with this new rubber feet, it is kind of glued to my desk. It's not moving except for when I'm pushing it. And uh, the button placement is very nice. And the buttons are working very good as well. So that's very cool. And here we can see that um, our opponents, our enemies are changing positions as well if we're going to switch to the ceiling. So uh, we can't really outsmart them by doing so, but uh, we may can use this to make some progress on certain positions. So let's see whether we can get rid of him first. And then we may switch to the ceiling and trying the same with the other one. And then I think we are close to the end of this level. Warning, and we have to get rid of this uh, boss and I have to admit that I wasn't really successfully doing so because this requires some change of positions and remembering the pattern of the shooting and uh, here I really lack some experience that's probably something I have to train a bit So we may just wait on the button and try shooting it. And it's gone. Well, that's the very first time I made it. Yeah, that's just because of this 
fantastic NES advantage and uh, maybe because of the special edition and here we can see a password so this game has a password system so you can write this down and then you can uh, continue the game at this position and uh, let's just briefly jump into the next level because I have never seen it I'm so excited and here we can see we have some parallax background scrolling and we have slightly different graphics and I expect that we can do a lot of things now we can jump to this position okay Ah, interesting. So now we really have to use this function to make progress in this game. And that's a good position to die anyway. Oh, interesting. So this is some kind or some sort of labyrinth. And uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to kill me in some way. Ah, okay. It's just moving. I can't jump to this place. Oh, I can't get out of this anymore. Interesting. So, this is... Uh, I think this is really going to take some time until I kind of got a feeling for this game. And... Ooh, ooh. Too slow, basically. Too slow. Game over. Well... That's a good point to call this video quits uh, because we have reached the end of the video. I'm not going to make this too long and bother you with my kind of uh, unprofessional game playing skills. Anyway, uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you have enjoyed unboxing this special collector's edition of Metal Storm. At least I'm very happy with the content and uh, it was definitely worth uh, waiting for it for more than four weeks paying some custom fees as well and uh, having all the hassle with uh, transportation inside germany anyway um, i'm really really happy with this um, edition and uh, i'm really happy that this rework of my nes advantage has worked so well and uh, well as i said at the beginning Big thanks to all of my supporters and if you have not um, done so yet then uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram where I am really trying hard to uh, keep posting updates about the progress and of the projects I'm working on and uh, basically what I have uh, planned for the next weeks is to get this project finished the rgb mod of the nes and there will be an uh, episode about this mod as well uh, i did some live sessions but uh, it took quite a while to get all that stuff together and i had some email contact with the supplier or the guy who shipped this kind of assembly kit there were some issues in the documentation and it wasn't really working out of the box uh, but uh, finally got this to work and um, i will go and talk about this whole thing as well and i'm working on the c64 sit replacement comparison video i did some recordings uh, last week but um, this week it was just crazy i had so many stuff um, on my on my desk on my to-do list uh, i just received a new 3d printer and i had some hassle getting it uh, running which is not really related to the 3D printer, but um, it was kind of a combination of all the things I was just putting together. And uh, therefore it was a bit challenging, but uh, this is going to kind of settle down now. I'm really trying to finish some of the projects now, and then we will have a more, hopefully kind of regular, not so chaotic uh, rhythm of videos. Anyway, so, um, as I said, thank you very much for your support. Thank you very much for watching. And, um, well, see you for the next episode. Bye-bye.